Today we are going to take a look at a simple image processing algorithm written in C++ and see how we can use Forte's high-level synthesis tool, Synthesizer, to transform this algorithm into a very efficient hardware implementation. We will begin with a very brief introduction to Synthesizer and follow that up with a description of the algorithm we are looking to implement. I'll then describe to you the details of the algorithm implementation with a particular focus on the use of the configurable line buffer IP that is included as part of the Synthesizer package. And finally, I'll finish up with a short discussion of the values proposed by a combination of Synthesizer and the line buffer IP to solve more complex problems. Let's start with a quick look at Synthesizer to frame the context. Synthesizer's basic function is to take behavioral or algorithmic C++ code and transform it into Verilog RTL that would be appropriate as input into your current hardware design flow. This Verilog code generated by Synthesizer would be simulated by your standard Verilog simulators and processed into gates with your standard logic synthesis tools. The inputs to the Synthesizer process begin with the C++ code, System C to be more specific. This input code can be very abstract. In order to promote easy integration with your other hardware blocks, Synthesizer provides mechanisms to specify the details of the interfaces to the algorithmic blocks. In addition to the C++ code describing your behavior, you also need to specify the synthesis directives or design constraints. This includes such things as the speed of the clock, the expected latency, and throughput requirements. In order for Synthesizer to be able to build quality hardware, the tool will also need access to your technology library file. This allows Synthesizer to determine how fast various circuits will be, as well as how big and how much power they will consume. With this data, Synthesizer can perform more detailed trade-offs of implementation characteristics, for example, which arithmetic operations like adders and multipliers go in which clock cycles. The output of the process is a set of Verilog implementation files that fit right on top of your standard RTL flow. The filter algorithm we are going to consider is that of an edge detection filter. This algorithm processes images either from a still camera or video camera and will create a derivative image that shows only the edges detected in the image. The way this is done is to process each pixel in the image and build a 5x5 matrix of the neighboring pixels. This matrix is called the working set. We then iterate over each value in the working set to boil it down into a single resultant pixel. This involves applying a table of filter coefficients to the working set and then clipping the values. It's worth noting that each pixel is actually a 24-bit value comprising three 8-bit values, one for each color, red, green, and blue. So let's try to understand the difference between how a software engineer and a hardware engineer would approach this problem. If I was just writing a software program, I would consider the entire image to be in memory at all times. I would build simple loops to iterate over each pixel, and for each pixel I would build a working set, apply the filter function, and store the resulting pixel to an output array. In this case, the entire input image and the entire output image would have reserved storage. In addition, this would require 25 memory reads for each pixel to build the working set. If we were to duplicate this design exactly when building hardware, we would end up with an extremely slow design that was very large due to the excessive storage required. A hardware designer looks at this problem differently. They don't consider the input and output image as static or persistent. Rather, they think of these images as data streams that are flowing through time. On the input side, the image data is streaming into the hardware block and will certainly require some storage, since we need to consider data from five rows of the image. The hardware engineer would structure an implementation as an input stream, feeding an interface that included the appropriate amount of storage for the required working set characteristics. The working set would be replenished very efficiently from one pixel to the next, with the minimum number of accesses to the data storage media. The working set would be processed either in a single clock cycle or the filtering algorithm would be pipelined in order to be able to produce an output pixel every clock cycle. This kind of approach results in extremely high throughput with very small designs. For this kind of design, a very common interface type is a line buffer. A line buffer stores lines or rows of the image as they are read. If well implemented, it will only store the absolute minimum number of pixels at any one time as required by the algorithm. The animation here shows how the algorithm will read pixel by pixel, and as soon as there are enough pixels in the buffer, 
the first working set can be constructed. Then, the working set will move across the image and output pixels can be calculated. In our example, this requires that we store a maximum of four rows of the image at any time, plus the storage for the working set. If the line buffer is well constructed, it will hide all the underlying details from the algorithm and just present a simple interface to the algorithm, which will be the working set. One aspect of our algorithm that can add some complication is what to do when the working set is not completely encapsulated in the virtual image. These are what we call boundary conditions. The ideal case is that the line buffer will allow the engineer some flexibility to specify how these boundary conditions are to be treated and then take care of the implementation details behind the scenes. There are a number of ways to treat these undefined values. Filling with zeros or selecting the nearest neighbor from the image set are common choices. Let's move on to the more concrete aspects of the implementation with Synthesizer. Here we see a window from the Synthesizer GUI that allows us to configure a line buffer for our needs. Since this window is a generic configuration window for many different kinds of interfaces, the first thing we need to do is select the kind of interface we want. In our case, it's line buffer. Now there are a couple of things we need to define for our line buffer. A definition of how the line buffer will be read, and a definition of the characteristics of the entire image to be processed. For the reader side of the line buffer, we will be using a working set. Here we need to set the size of the working set to 5x5. Five five. For the boundary condition, we've selected nearest, which, as the name suggests, will fill undefined values with their nearest real image pixel value. The origin defines the coordinates of the focus pixel in the working set. In our case, this is set to 2,2, 2, which is the center of the working set matrix. The parameter defines the shape of the overall image itself. In this case, the image comprises data of type pixel, which is 24 bits wide, and the image size is set to 512 by 512. Once all these settings are defined, pressing Generate will generate a System C class that represents your line buffer. Simply connect this up in your design and begin calling the API functions provided to get a working set. This diagram shows how the line buffer is connected up to the rest of our design. It reads single values from the test bench and stores them in the memories provided. The filter module will read entire working sets from the line buffer, process them, and generate a single pixel output to another part of the test bench. No discussion of this example would be complete without looking at some actual source code. To do that, we're going to launch Synthesizer Workbench and download this example, which is actually included as part of the software distribution. We would go to the Examples and Labs page, scroll down to the Edge Detection filter, select it, copy it to our local space, and immediately begin editing. Now here, this will also walk you through a detailed description of the project when you download it. We'll begin by looking at some source code in the filter.cpp file. Here we see the main loop of the filter module. The definition of the matrix that will hold the working set is clearly defined, and it's easy to identify the variable called new pixel that will temporarily hold the newly calculated pixel values that will comprise the output image. After receiving some configuration data regarding the size of the image and passing that data onto the line buffer, we see a call to the API function start TX. This tells the line buffer that this filter module is ready to start a transaction. In other words, it's ready to begin processing a new image. The next loop says, iterate until all rows are processed. Then, iterate until all pixels in a particular row are processed. And now we get to the meat of the interface to the line buffer. We simply ask the line buffer for the next working set, call the doFilter function to calculate a new pixel value, and push that new pixel value to the output port. Very simple. Once we get to the end of a row, we tell the line buffer to switch to the next row, and once all rows are processed, we indicate that we are done with the transaction, i.e. the current image. This would normally be a very complicated process, but due to the fact that an enormous amount of complexity is encapsulated in the line buffer class, the designer's life is dramatically simplified. So let's take a look at the actual filter function. This code is painfully simple. The function accepts an argument that is the working set. It then iterates over each pixel in the working set, multiplying it by the corresponding element in the coefficient table, 
and summing the individual color elements. Once all pixels are treated, it then clips the pixel values to be in the range 0 to 255 and returns the new pixel. It is worth pointing out that it is on these kinds of functions that engineers need to focus in order to build products that differentiate them from their competition. All the rest is housekeeping and scut work to get data in and out. Using a tool like Synthesizer and the Line Buffer IP allow you to focus on the portion of the design that brings your company true value, since the complex trivia are handled automatically. To conclude the presentation, I wanted to go back over some of the key values demonstrated by this design approach and the Synthesizer toolset. Just considering the interface, we see dramatic simplification of the design. The GUI allows designers to quickly configure the line buffer and perhaps experiment with various implementations. An enormous amount of complexity is encapsulated in the pre-verified IP that is generated as a result. The line buffer IP frees you from the detailed management of the working set, the memory storage, and the boundary conditions. The user application code, i.e. the filter, is also dramatically simplified. The higher level of abstraction enabled by SystemC and Synthesizer result in code that is very easy to maintain, update, and reuse. And let's not forget the verification angle. All interface IP generated by Synthesizer automatically has both pin and transaction level interfaces. Of course, when the design is synthesized to RTL, it will only have pin level interfaces. The simulation performance afforded by the more abstract interfaces at the behavioral level enable faster debugging and more exhaustive simulation. Thank you for your time and I hope this has provided you some valuable insight into Synthesizer and the benefits it delivers.